Madden NFL 808 for the GameCube is special for, well, being the last GameCube game ever. Like, at all. There hasn't been a GameCube game since, nor will there ever be. But, uh, yeah, that's why I kind of wanted to get this game. Um, thing is, what kind of prevented me from that is that it's like a 15 to like $20 game, which obviously is a feasible price for, in most cases, for most people, I would assume. But, uh, I didn't feel like paying that much for this, especially considering, to be honest, I barely know how to play the fucking sport. But, um, you know, of course, it's, well, nice to own. You know, eight bucks. I mean, from what I hear, it's good, which I guess for if you're a football fan, that's good to know that you'll be getting a quality product. Uh, yeah. Read and react. Memory card uses 181 blocks. <sighs> Holy shit. That's like, I think that's even more than like Animal Crossing. And Animal Crossing, you know, had to come with its own memory card because, you know, there's so much data and shit. But, uh, yeah, you know, it's nice to have this, and, uh, Vince Young, this guy right here, I wonder how he feels about being the face of the last GameCube game in the world. Yeah. Here we have Power Spike Pro Beach Volleyball for the PlayStation. Um, this is kind of unique for actually being one of a handful of volleyball games on the system. Which, uh, there's not too many volleyball games, not only for the system, but just in general, there's certainly not as many volleyball games compared to like baseball or basketball or hockey or whatever I guess not just I guess because the sport is not as popular but you know hey I mean volleyball is a sport that I don't like playing in real life it wasn't fun when I had to play it for gym but uh, you know it's cool as a video game and uh, well this game in particular seems to be pretty good from what I've played also it's a four player game so if you have the multi tap uh, go nuts Power Spike is genuine beach volleyball for your PlayStation game console without the sunburn. Ah, well that's, uh, eh, th that's debatable. You know, I mean, you don't always have to, nobody's always going to be playing volleyball in scorching hot weather. Nobody's always going to be playing volleyball outdoors. And even if the weather's hot and nice and stuff, what if they're wearing sunscreen? Or what if they go in the shade, take a break? Maybe there's not always a sunburn when you're playing volleyball, so, uh... Yeah, what are you saying, uh, game developers? Also, the name Power Spike kind of reminds me of Power Strike for the Master System, although that's a shooter and this is a volleyball game, so they're not related at all. But, uh, yeah. A uh, good game from what I've played, and, uh, well, uh, it's a bit of a late release for the system. Came out in 2000, so, yeah, how about that shit? Alright, now we got some. Super Nintendo and Nintendo 64 games. All of these I picked up in New York, and I said I was going to talk about them, so here we are. Except for this one. Uh, this one I did not pick up in New York. Here we have Vegas Stakes, uh, noteworthy for being my first boxed Super Nintendo game. There's the cartridge. Uh, game itself, well, it's a casino game. It's a little more than what I expected because um, there's like this story mode thing going on. It's not just like, oh, here's some, you know, like casino games, go nuts, or whatever. Also, it's a game that uses the SNES mouse. That's pretty cool. And another thing that kind of surprised me is that this game is actually developed by HAL Laboratories. You know, them. Need I say more? You know, they made new Ghostbusters 2 on NES, and Smash Bros, and Kirby, and Othello on NES. I think they made a Famicom Disk System game that, or two. I might have, I don't know. But yeah, it's a casino game with story mode and shit, so... Yeah, it's kind of cool from what I've played, and I don't know how much I'm going to play of it now. But, uh, definitely a neat little, uh, game and nice tone, especially in box. It's got the manual. I think it's got the manual, does it? I don't know, let's check. Hmm. It doesn't have the manual, but it has this, uh, I turned into Bowser's worst nightmare. A consumer inf inf information and precautions booklet and a poster. Yeah, the clothes and the dryer are done, if you can hear that, but whatever. Yeah, I'll put all that back later. Here's Word Triss. Um, it's a puzzle game, and, well, yeah. Word Triss. 
you know, like Tetris, although this is nowhere near as good as Tetris, or quite honestly, a lot of other puzzle games I got. In fact, I believe the rating of this game on Game FAQs is like 2 out of 5, and well, I don't hate this game, I, I don't hate this game, you know, it's just like, yeah, I can kind of see why. I mean, I kind of like it, you know, I get some amusement out of it, but honestly, if you hate this game, I can completely understand why, because the fun factor is kind of eh, like, this game seems to be kind of stingy with the vowels, and you know, you need to spell out words with falling blocks to make things disappear and then move on to the next stage, but it's like, the fun factor isn't as good grand as it could be for when the playing field is a little too small and you know and yet like a lot half the screen is like taken up by like circus images and shit circus images that look really nice but you know you won't be able to admire them because focusing on a sort of eh puzzle game i mean i'm glad to own it i'm glad to finally try it but you know it's like not the best uh but i guess if you curious enough it is pretty damn cheap so uh yeah here we have Gradius 3, um, most recent Super Nintendo game, and uh, it's an early release for the system. I believe this came out in 91. I don't think it was a launch title, but it was pretty damn close. Uh, in terms of getting Gradius 2, well, that's going to be kind of a bitch, because that was a Famicom game. Uh, it's I, it was also on Gradius Deluxe Pack for the uh, Sega Saturn, where you get Gradius 1 and 2, but that's kind of pricey. But, you know, hey, I'm glad to have Gradius 3, and, uh, well, it's a shooter, you know, like all the other Gradius games, it's hard as fuck, uh, but I do like this a lot more than Gradius 1, I just think the level design and game design is just more fun, you know, and I always like the power-up system, I mean, even with fully powered up, whether you fully power up legitimately or you cheat and, you know, put in, like, Konami code to get the power-ups, you know, it's still hard, so, you know, it's... Not as addictive as I would want it to be, because, you know, I find myself resetting the system a lot, but I still think it's a good game. You know, like, beating it is, is definitely possible, I will say. You know, it's not as unforgiving as, like, Silver Surf or whatever, but, you know, hey. Not a game that I love, but certainly not a game I hate. It's a good game. I like Gradius 3, although, <sighs> resetting the console a lot, you know, because it's hard. But still, a good shooter, and you should probably get it if you own a Super Nintendo. Alright, now for the N64 games. Here we have Mario Tennis, a game that I've been wanting for years and years and years. Uh, but, you know, hey, I'm glad it hasn't shot up to like 70, 60 bucks in the recent years. And, well, hey, it's tennis, and it's freaking awesome tennis at that, you know? Uh, it's also, of course, you know, the first game to introduce Waluigi. That's cool, because Waluigi's fucking awesome, and he needs to be in a main series Mario game. And, you know, it's just, it's tennis, but it's so good tennis. Like, even if it wasn't Mario, it's just, it's such a really well-programmed, well-made, fun time. You know, I don't know how much more I can praise Mario Tennis on the N64. Absolutely great game. Now, here we have uh, Brunswick Circuit Pro Bowling. Um, it's bowling. One of three bowling one of three bowling games on the N64, the other two being Milo's Astrolanes and the really hard to find Super Bowling. Um, this, I believe, is the cheapest one. And, you know, oh, also, it's got like this right here, one of these custom labels. I didn't put that on. That was actually how I got it at Video Games New York. Um, the game itself, to be honest, it's a. It, I'd say it's almost a great game, actually. It's a really freaking good well-made bowling game. The pin physics are nice, you know, the, uh, just the physics of the bowling ball, all that good stuff. I mean, granted, the character models are kind of, eh, graphically, but, you know, it's just a really, like, well-polished, enjoyable bowling game. I don't know if I like it as much as, say, Super Bowling, you know, the Super Nintendo game, but, uh, holy shit, this does not disappoint. I would recommend it, you know, as a bowling fan, if you'd want it, you know, that'd be good. Just a really well-polished, fun game. You know, check it out. <clears throat> Here we have Pilot Wings 64. Um, this is noteworthy for being one of the very few launch titles for the system. One of two in North America and one of three in Japan. Uh, but because I own this, now I own all three launch titles. I mean, granted, 
Europe got, I want to say, like, 10 or 11 launch titles because it got the system in 1997, whereas, you know... We got it in 96, but uh, yeah, the other two in Japan are Super Mario 64 and Sakyo Habu Shogi, uh, which I do own. Uh, so yeah, it's great to have all three launch titles, especially with the N64 turning 20 really soon. And uh, well, what can I say? Um, yeah, it's great stuff. I mean, I really, really liked Pilot Wings, you know, on Super Nintendo. I never played Pilot Wings Resort on the 3DS, but here, this is just, it's just fun stuff. You know, you do certain tasks and certain, like, vehicles and machines and stuff, whether it's landing on targets, landing on a certain area, going through a certain amount of, like, I don't know, rings or whatever, it's just, it's, you know, it's mindless sometimes, but it's just really fun, you know, and enjoyable, like, Pilot Wings is really friggin' good. I mean, if, like, I don't think it's as good as, say, like, Wave Race, and I compare it to Wave Race because both Pilot Wings and Rave Race are Nintendo game series that only have three games. So, uh, yeah, you know, that's definitely something Nintendo should consider on bringing back both Pilot Wings and Wave Race. And also, look at this, look at this cover art. Not as the same as the cartridge, not as the same as the box, I should say, because, you know, the cartridge art is different, but, you know, it's still kind of nice. Uh, but Pilot Wings 64 is a great game. I like it. Now we move on to the Atari 2600 games. Yeah. Look at that. Uh, if you're an Atari fan, uh, you should stick around, because I got some things to say. In fact, I am even displayed them here on this piano right here that m my family and I, you know, friggin' almost never use, but it's there. Okay, alright, here we have Midnight Magic. Um, bought this solely on the name and the fact that it's a red label 2600 game, meaning it's a late release for the system. But I didn't even look at the cover and notice it's a pinball game. And, uh, yeah, it's a pinball game. A uh, really freaking good one at that. I do think this is a lot better than a video pinball for the 2600. As much as I like that game, this is definitely a, a huge improvement. And something I should actually play a little more often. Maybe even play it at midnight, you know? I actually like to stay up and play it at midnight or 1am or whatever the hell I feel like doing, you know? Great pinball game. I would definitely recommend it if you own a 2600. Then we have the real sports games. Uh, the ones I had were real sports volleyball and real sports tennis. I'm still missing real sports boxing, but other than that, I've got them all, except for, you know, boxing, real sports boxing. Here we have real sports baseball, which uh, this game sucks. Okay, this is like, this is such a bad game. It's so complicated, it's so, like, annoying to, you know, play and, like, do shit in this game. I mean, I don't know how else really to describe it. I'd say check out Aqualung Game Reviews. Aqualung Game Reviews, yes. Uh, review on this, because he pretty much explains all the ins and outs and kind of explains that this game is kind of too complicated for its own good and really not that fun to play. You know, even as somebody who's not really not a baseball fan, you know, this is not a good game. Sorry to say. Here we have Real Sports Soccer, which, uh, it's a game that does many things right. I do think the play mechanics are fine for a soccer game on the 2600, but um, it kind of has one fatal flaw. One flaw that is kind of, you know, unexcusable, and it's like, well, why the fuck is it there? There's no goalie in this game. Absolutely no goalie whatsoever, and it's like... <sighs> the fact that there exists a soccer game that doesn't have a goalie is just astonishingly stupid. Especially, this is called real sports soccer. You know what happens in the real sport of soccer? There's a fucking goalie. So I don't understand why there's no goalie here. Because other than that, it would be a really good game. But, you know... I, I don't know how much else I can say. I mean, it, again, like I said, it plays well. It's just, the fact that there's no goalie is just inexcusable. Here we have Real Sports Football, which I'm uh, not a football fan, but actually from what I've seen around and, you know, what other people say, this is actually said to be actually not a bad game, uh, which is, you know, good for football fans. I mean, I just fiddle around with it. I don't think I've played it more than, I think I've played it about three times, which I'm amazed that i played it that many times, but hey, yeah, it's football. Here we have Ice Hockey, which, um... I believe this is actually the only hockey game for the uh, 2600. This is, you know, one of the Activision ones, and unfortunately, this 
is peeling off a little bit so I might have to glue that back on as you can see the glue is like oxidizing which happens a lot to Activision 2600 games but um <clears throat> the game itself yeah it's great it actually is a really good fucking game like granted I do wish the play field was a little bigger but it's it's a game that's you know simplistic you know but old and stuff but it's so enjoyable for what it is and I would highly recommend it. You know, even if you're not a hockey fan, you gotta play this. You know, just such a charming, well-made hockey game. Here we have Space Jockey, which is, well, one of the first, actually the first kind that I own of 2600 games in this shape that VidTech made, where these, like, there's this little, like, cut, this little cut here on the back for some reason. Also, this is actually slightly, slightly taller no, well, you can see that, but yeah, it's like slightly taller than most 2600 games. Uh, the game itself, well, you shoot stuff and you rack up points. It's kind of easy, but at the same time, they the gameplay balances out enough to make a easy, but, you know, still somewhat challenging and addicting game where you just, you know, shoot down stuff coming at your way. In a way, it is kind of like a shooter, except all the enemies are, well, stationary and, you know, they kind of go by fast. That and also it's a score game, there's no, you know, it's not like, oh, beat this amount of levels. No, it's a score game and not a bad one, actually. I can see kind of why people might find it boring, but I like it. It's good. And uh, Stampede, and I put that next because this is called Space Jockey, which I believe jockey means, like, horse racing or something, doesn't it? It's got to be something related to sports. And, you know, horse racing is a sport, isn't it? Sort of. Although you're not, this isn't a horse racing game, I mean, I guess it kind of is, but, you know, what you do is you basically, you're on this horse and you're rattling up the other horses and shit, while avoiding the skulls, which slow you down, though if you let three horses get off screen, that's it. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's not a bad game, but in all honesty, I feel like the fun factor is kind of lowered by the fact that it's really freaking hard. Like, get even, like the most skilled people would kind of have a tough time getting to like say 20,000 like I could probably get to 20,000 if I tried but it's like I feel like the difficulty makes this game not as addictive to get a high score compared to a lot of other like 2600 games I'm not saying it's a bad game it's just you know that's just how I feel about it <clears throat> and we have Othello look at that cover what the hell is that that's just like some guy like tripping out going like hmm I don't know, that's just how I would imagine it, because, you know, it makes some loud, echoey noise as he puts down the tile. It's like, what the hell is going on with this cover? But yeah, the game itself, it's a board game, you know. You may know what this is, actually. And a pretty good version of it for the 2600, actually. Nicely well-programmed and well-designed. Uh, good stuff, actually. It's also easier than Othello on the NES, I can tell you that. Uh... Dig Dug, it's a port of the, you know, arcade game, and a pretty good one, actually, for 2600 standards. Uh, for some reason, it comes in this cartridge, which I believe some, like, color-labeled Atari 7800 games came in, but, uh, yeah. I don't know. I love Dig Dug, by the way. Dig Dug is awesome, and this is a great port of it. And, lastly, we have Adventure, which, uh, this is one of the few 2600 games to, um, actually hold its value, which is kind of interesting, because, you know, yes, there are those incredibly hard-to-find, one-of-a-kind games, those are those relatively uncommon games. This is not a rare game, it sold over a million, but, you know, it just held its value for it being the first of its kind, the first kind of, you know, adventure game, being very inspirational and stuff. Uh, I mean, even though, yeah, you can beat it in, in, like, two minutes or whatever, at least on the easy and normal difficulties, it's still, you know, a cool game, and still definitely a nice piece of uh, video game history to own. Yeah.